in any uh, composition that is very close to the meta, I think the most useful and the most intuitive way to look at it is to understand how the meta six play and how your couple of swaps will change how you want to play compared to the meta six, right? So the meta six being Arissa, Sigma, May, Hanzo, uh, Batiste, and Zenyatta, which excel at holding a corner, placing an immortality field down when, once both of your shields go down, and poking the enemy with, um, with extreme damage, right? Forcing their immortality field to all plays around that. Um, the... So the, the meta comp is based on breaking shields and uh, forcing resources, sort of like Goats was about forcing resources. The difference is here being that we have Reaper instead of May and we have Lucio instead of Zenyatta, right? So we're losing out, unless we're like standing on top of them, we're losing out on a lot of shield break. So in addition, they have Ryan instead of Sigma, so they have more shielding than us. And they have Sim, who's going to do a lot of shield break at close range. So we're not going to win the shield break battle. So what we have to be going for with our Lucio and our Reaper is aggressive plays to get picks, because the longer this fight goes on, the more value they're going to get, and the more resources they're going to drain from us. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Everybody else? Yeah. Hold up, the camera shifted and I couldn't see anything. All right. So the first thing, once you guys, at this point, you guys have noticed the same uh, composition is to kill the teleporter as soon as you see it, especially because five of their members haven't taken it. That's a great opportunity to get a 6v1 right there. Some people are shooting it. It doesn't actually die. You can hit it from there. This, all right, so this, this camera transition is messing me up over and over again. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Let's go like frame by frame. All right, so many resources sure get used in like this one second of gameplay that we're gonna have to go like frame by frame to actually look at this. Oh my goodness! So we place down our Arisa shield. They take the same teleporter. They use their ice wall and their block. At which point, May needs to be the the call immediately since she's used her block right here, and she's way aggressive. This lamp positioning is very poor. Uh, is Arbatiste here? Not here. He was a tryout, support tryout. That's not the right lamp. Both of these lamp placements are extremely poor. So the, the other lamp is right here. Oh. You, you get the full value. The, the lamp radius will extend to like here if you just place it outside in this doorway. And it's much harder to shoot. Depending on the doorway heights, sometimes if it's outside, then it might not get LOS. But if you, you can place it like in the doorway where it hits the doorway and it'll get LOS in both directions and it makes it a little harder to hit. But the fact that it's just out here in the middle of nowhere is not great. It's hard. I feel like I heard Volatile call pull, but I didn't see the pull come out. There's the pull. It's a decent use of pull. It's just way too late. They're already on top of you. Do you perhaps already use pull earlier and it was on cooldown? Yeah, I used it like around there. When, if you could point it out when you use it, has it already happened or? I can't really see from this angle. Yeah, that's the tough part. It sounded like it happened right there. <laughs> Yeah, this is a waste. So, like, here, I'm going to go back just so, because now we know it's clumped up on the Arisa and the Brigitte. Wait, they're running. 
That's not Brigitte. Who is that through the wall? Anyway, it's the original and the couple squishy standing next to her. They get pulled. I want you to just look at how far they move. Right? It just puts them a little bit closer together to each other. And now you're without that resource for eight seconds. So the I'd save this until we've identified the rest of their comp. Uh, the, the pull is one of the most valuable peel tools in the Arista Sigma comp. The pull and the rock are extremely powerful um, at deterring them from rushing you. So the the other major difference between your compositions is that um, they have Arista Rhine while you have Arista Sigma, right? So the just comparing the Rhine versus the Sigma, the Rhine wants to get on top of you and do damage with his hammer, whereas your Sigma can do damage at range, but he's a little squishier at close distance. So your second use of pull here to pull them away from you is excellent. It's your first use of pull that really is uh, really hinders you guys in this team fight. Um, so in these engagements where we know they have a Symmetra, but we don't know the rest of their team comp, I suggest saving your pull so that you can because uh, there might be something like a Reinhardt that's going to try to come at you, like in this situation. So be a little more patient. I like that Nox is on an off angle here. This is good. This is like what I said earlier, where we're going to have to be looking for picks, aggressive picks with this composition, because we'll lose the uh, battle over time. This is good being on an off angle here. Yeah, that's how we had talked about playing it. Yeah. This here is where we really need the pull, and it's still on cooldown, where the Ryan is rushing at us. It gives us like one extra second, but sometimes that extra second is the, the difference between somebody dying and not dying. This drift out here isn't necessary. Um, and this battle versus the... The, the the time with the shield down with the where the Aris is like wandering around the point is putting yourself at risk when not really gaining your team much extra space. Like this is fine. Like ideally you're still holding this corner. You only need to be on the point so much as to but like have your toe touch it. This drift out here isn't necessary. So like the our our comp um, wants to avoid the Reinhardt shooting us at distance. And if, if we can, the fact that they've backed up to here and we're like way back here, if we were still touching the point at the corner, is more than 12 meters of distance, which is going to be outside of Sims range, which is great for us. So if they're going to give you that distance, just let them do it. That's an okay pull, but I'd say just keep it for their rush. They're kind of standing around doing nothing. Sorry, I don't mean to like focus on the Arisa over and over, but like it's in team play, that's what's going to keep coming up. It's literally the first time I'm playing in scrim. All right, so we're 5v5. There's a sig our Sigma's dead and their May is dead. Another terrible immortality field for the same reason as the last one, but they're not here. So, why do I only see three people? The Reapers died and their our Sigmas died. Where's our fourth ha person? Hanzo's next to his name. Or next to oh, he's way the hell up here. That is aggressive. Is Phantom here? Sorry, I yes. haven't been looking at his call. Okay. How do, I want to I want to rewind this a bit and see how you even got there in the first place. You don't think you'll even see him? <laughs> yeah, I was left. I was mid the entire time. Oh, here, yeah, here's your arrows flying in. I was off angling the in mid the entire time. So if your team is going to be holding this corner, this is not called an off angle. This is called a flank. If your team is holding this corner and you are shooting from here, this is an off angle. This, you are like almost 180 degrees from where your team is positioned. Like an off angle, you can take a few steps back and you'll be, um, you'll be back to relative safety. 
the the thing you with Hanzo you can like climb back over the wall, <sighs> but good players in that time that you'll climb over the wall you'll be dead anyway. This is, I mean they don't push you on it, but better players will push you on it. I'm not a not a fan of this position. You just let the May escape there. Is Kitty Cat in chat? Who's Kitty Cat? No. Okay. Um, at the May only gets so far here. At this point, we should be looking to speed boost and chase her. And if she gets back to her team in time, then we can just speed boost away. But at least make an attempt here. Yeah, so like you're getting value over here, but you're getting value because this is what a gold scrim. Um, uh, I think they had two GMs on their team. Yeah. yeah. Then, I mean, no excuse for them then. They should be pushing you. They should be pushing you, killing you, and then taking the 6v5. Oh, they do. They do. <laughs> That halted me, and they all. The four... So we're getting. Oh, sorry. Am I, I don't know if I'm interrupting people or if it's just the VOD. Um. So we've got some inefficiencies with our, our shield timings here because we're not calling them out. So, um. As the Arisa player, it's really useful. Like it's, Carlos not here, right? Okay. Um. In my experience, the Arisa player mainly takes over the the shield timing calls because your your shield is like on a definite cooldown, whereas Sigma's shield is more fluid and he can kind of roll with the punches. Um, so saying when when you're putting down a shield, um, and then when your shield breaks in the Sigma, if you're playing if you're playing linearly, right? So there's let's back up a bit. There's say you placed your shield here and the Sigma shield is where it is right now. That's um, the, the signal would be like taking an off angle and playing a little split and trying to do uh, damage from the side. Or there's the way that you guys are playing right now, which is fine, which is the Arisa shield is here until it goes down and then you put the signal shield up, which I call playing linearly because <clears throat> um, you're shielding the same angle. If you're playing linearly, um, it's important to uh, have at least your Sigma, but also the rest of your team know when your shield is about to go down so that he can be ready to put his up, and also when your shield is about to be back so that he can be ready to take his down as soon as possible and um, have it start recharging as fast as possible. Um, and there's just a moment of overlap here because we're not calling those out. Our Sigma here also needs to be calling that he's using his resource. The His... Uh, I call it matrix because it's similar to defense matrix. Um, the biggest thing with this meta, the the carry positions in this meta are Arisa, Sigma, and Batiste. Um, if your team can have like perfect timing of your resources between your Arisa, Sigma, and Batiste, there's nothing the enemy team can really do. Uh, so those resources, of course, being Arisa Shield, Sigma Shield, uh, Arisa Fortify, Sigma Grasp, and Batiste uh, Drone. So every time one of those is being used, Fortify being the least important of, of those to call out, but still important to call out. Every time one of those is being used, those need to be called out. See, here's just another example of the same thing from before of the overlap. I like that you called out your halt, but just the same thing for your, uh, same thing for your shield. Yeah. 
So I like that. Who is this? Kitty? Because you said mine. I like that Kitty's tracking their ultimates and was close enough um, tracking the ultimates. Uh, it's. I find it le like it should be the expectation that everybody on your team is pressing tab and is aware of the, the team's ultimates. Um, so I recommend skipping the step of calling out the ultimates that your team has and go straight into the step of making the plan of which ultimates your team is going to use. Because if you want to fit all these things into the time between fights, the, all the things that you need to be calling out, there's just not a, there's just not time to go over the list of ults you have. Oh, sorry, that's in the VOD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind, kind of got confused, too. <laughs> I like the bongo spot, by the way. It's good. Sorry to keep focusing on tanks, but it's just a, such a tank meta. I don't, I don't mean to call you guys out over and over again, but it's just, it's a tank meta. Um, a small thing here with the contest is that the the point of, ha, the point, the point of touching the point is to make them touch the point, right? So that we can see them and we can shoot at them, but they're already standing on the point. So like you can be one step back and not actually touching the point, you don't have to you don't have to put yourself in as dangerous of a position because they're already doing it for you. If they weren't touching the point, then you'd have to like it's still good to put your shield on point so you have the option of touching it, but you yourself don't have to be up there. Um if they're not going to be. Is Phantom here? Yes. All right, so you need to be calling your dragons before you use them. All did right. I, did I just miss it in the VOD? Or? No, no, I right. pretty much thought if I did dragons, I would put the Orisa off by herself, and then they can push her, but I didn't call it, so that was my bad. Yeah, so, like, it's it's fine to do spontaneous dragons. Like, if you see, if you see like, an excellent opportunity and you just want to use them, that's fine. You just got to say something, right? You got to give your team a heads up. Like, even if you're, it's as you're doing, it's like, I'm using dragons. And then your Arisa will, like, know what's happening. Because otherwise, it takes time to process these things. It takes time to figure out what's happening. If somebody just tells you what's happening, you know instantly, right? Yeah. Um, so say that you're using dragons so that your Arisa can have the heads up. Volatile does a good job of reacting to the situation, but just help Volatile out a little bit. Give him a heads up. Yeah, yeah. Nice call on the swap. Is it an intentional decision here to be standing on the point? Does it like was this talked about in the scrim? No, it wasn't. All right. The Reaper is a swap from Sim, or they had Hanzo, didn't they? No, they didn't have a Hanzo. No, they 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 were Sim. Yeah. So I think I think holding the point is perfectly fine because they had the Symmetra. Once they have the Reaper, I'd like to see you guys hold the choke. So at this point, when Kitty Cat calls out that they swapped a Reaper, it should be going to the choke. 
Did he say we have every single lot or they have every single lot? We don't. We don't have two alts. Sorry, let me. I should have done this at the beginning. Let me just get a craft reference of who's here. So, Phantom and Volatile? Okay. Somebody dipped. Oh, no. I think he not, misspoke not. and he meant to say that they have every single ult instead of us, except for Reaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's important even to say that out loud, though, that. Um, no. There it is. Uh, he meant us. I don't know. You should back up a little bit. I like the beat. I don't like Kitty Cat then coming back in here to die himself. That's foolish. All right, this is time for Phantom to touch. Got a die on point there. Because you had the opportunity. So die on point and not die myself? Yeah. Like, so like if... I had a... mm -hmm. Go ahead. My bad. Since Let's go back to where we can actually see you. Like, jumping out of the uh, blizzard is good. Um, at this point, they're about to cap the point. And you can stall it for like an extra 1% or 2% because you're going to die anyway. Okay, yeah, because I had the idea of just jumping off the map and I get give them ult charge. Like five points of ult charge? It, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Hold on. Let's go back to what Kitty's saying here. Yeah, they don't have Reaper out. They're done. Sorry, Valtal, can you repeat what you were saying in the VOD? I didn't catch it. I was trying to say we could use our shields to separate the trans from them. Okay. Or try to, at least. Mm -hmm. That's a good plan. Um, the rest of the plan is necessary, though, before we go into this fight. Uh, so, like, we've got four ultimates here. What's the order of our ultimates, right? Like, we know they have Immortality Field, we know they have Transcendence. If we use all four ults at the same time, they're going to trance and nobody's going to die. Or they're going to immortality field and nobody's going to die. So we got to force their resources with our ultimates so that once their resources are out, then we can use other things to kill them, right? Or like there's, there's advantages to like the different orders of using these resources, but far and away the most important thing is just having a plan of which what order you want to use them in to force which things. Um, even if it's not like completely optimal, just being on the same page of the order that you want to use them in so that you don't stack them all on top of each other is the most important thing.
and that should be the end of the map, right? So, okay, what Kitty's saying here is, like, fine, but, like, not right now. Um, like, talking about ult combos is, if you have those ults, it's a good thing to talk about. Or if it's, like, not during a scrim, during, like, an active scrim or a match, if it's between maps, that's fine. But you guys aren't going to combo those ults this fight. So it's important to be talking, like, right now, be talking about what you're going to be doing this fight. Um, the other thing is that, like, it's good that you're planning where, planning where you want to roll out, but don't roll out point on this map. It's really important to fight for white room um, because it's it's the relative high ground on this map. And if you own white room, the other team is on point. You have an extreme advantage. Yo, what's up, guys? Oh, hello. Sorry, I was in streamer mode, so I didn't notice you dropped in. Good. What you guys up to? Bad review. Oh, nice. There's a there's a link if you want to jump in, or I don't expect you to want to jump into a VOD review, but if you want to, you can. Much okay, so same thing as uh, same thing as the first round where it you start off with a halt here that just kind of keeps them exactly where they were anyway. Um, I'd rather you wait until they try to rush you so that you can halt them backwards or look for isolation targets like this junkrat would be an excellent target to try to isolate with a halt here. Gotcha. Oh, goodbye, dig. Ooh, nasty rock. See, the other thing with this fight is um, is timing of our flanker. Uh, I know Noxtrus isn't here, but um, it, it's still a full team thing, where if we've got somebody going on a flank, it's important that we uh, time our frontline engagement with their engagement on the back line. Um, so where even is Noxtrus at this point? He was taking a flank up top, teleporting up to the high ground. So we're we're committing to a 5v6 right here because Noxtrus isn't even close. Uh, so this is on Noxtrus to communicate, but also on us to be aware of his positioning. This is way too long of a flank. The entire fight is going to happen before Noxtrus gets there. If you guys end up playing uh, flanker characters sort of like Noxtrus is playing here, it's important to give your team uh, give your team warning. So Noxtrus says, "I'm going for Zen," but it's not enough time for us to react, right? Um, so kind of at at this point, five seconds earlier, Noxtrus knows what he's going to be doing, so he can give us a few seconds warning instead of waiting until he actually starts shooting. Yes. So the the communication goes both ways, right? So if imagine we're we're in this first fight, let's go back a little bit. 
we're waiting on since we are the the default engagement we're waiting on um on Knox timing right we want we don't want to goodness I feel like I'm talking over kitty but it's just the vod um we are the default engagement like we're the we're the engagement that's going to happen regardless right we can't just like not roll out right um so we're waiting on Knox's timing in order to like uh, commit our our halt and our rock and our whatever, or if we wanted to go for an aggressive Lucio boop it, with the flanker, right? We're waiting on Nox's timing, but it it can it can go both ways, but depending on the situation here, right? So if we go to the second fight, then Nox is waiting on our timing. So Nox doesn't die, and he's um, just kind of in the enemy backline here, waiting on us our timing of our engagement. So Nox saying he can't push here, like he's right, he can't really push here, but the reason he can't push is because he's getting six people's uh, resource of attention onto him. Where was uh, Nox here? Uh, kind of off in this direction on the coast. Gotcha, okay. So right here we need to be calling really aggressively in comms that like the like three, two, one, now I'm pushing their front line. And you can even like take a slightly suicidal approach that like I'm gonna go push really aggressively on this Rhine's Aria just to really grab their attention. And the Rhine's Aria is gonna be like, oh, their Aris is way too close. Their Sigma's way too close, and they'll rush up on you, at which point Nox can go into the back line. Um, but it's all about the timing, because Nox doesn't know that this is that this is the exact timing of the push. Oh, this immortality field hurts me. At this point, because we're respawning and walking back, Nox needs to be setting up his next off angle to be ready for the next engagement. Yeah, so the 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 major trend is a lack of calling um, cooldowns and resources from from our own team, like placing down our Vista Shield, placing down our Sigma Shield, placing down Immortality, um, timing of entering the back line, using our Batista ult, using our uh, Hanzo ult. Um, all of these things need to be called, and most of them aren't being called, um, which is leading to uh, missed timings by our teammates. Sorry, I'm I'm having a hard time telling who's talk if it's in the VOD or not. Are you, did you guys say something or did you want to say something? No. Okay. Can you explain, like, on maybe more depth of what would be go signals, like in in, in terms of resources used in general by the other team? So I guess like being like, able to verify openings and like this and is our time just interject one second i thought mm -hmm. that saying throwing shield on would be a go signal by us yeah you mean a go signal for them go signal for us to engage when i'm saying i'm throwing shield on point right but i didn't hear you say it in the vod was the thing um the second push okay i'll go back and maybe it is, you know, it's, it's like it's not something we talked about, um, but maybe it is for you, but probably not for the team, right? Maybe they don't understand what that mm -hmm. means. So just, you know, it might be time to, well, it is time to maybe talk about specific keywords and common structure. Like just, yeah. and yeah. don't feel, don't, don't be afraid to like stop me. Like 
I, we don't have to go like through entire maps before y'all comment on something, okay? Is it is it this push you're talking about? Yes. Okay, I'll turn up the volume. Throwing shield on point. I had to, I had to. Faulting up. Okay, but doing in doing this, you're asking Nox to be AFK for ten seconds because this is your, your second shield. Um. It's so, like it's good that you called this one, and I missed this the first time. So I'm glad I'm I'm thankful that you pointed it out. Uh, I think it's got to be the first one though, because Knox is in hiding right now, and they're they're pushing looking for him. Um, so this this first shield that you throw here, I think, has to be the one that you call out. Um, because that's that's Knox's timing. If Knox has to wait for this shield, then it's sort of a situation of the first fight where um, Nox isn't participating for most of the team fight. I gotcha. I was just trying to set up up there first to make the push onto point. At least that's what I was thinking at the time anyway. Mm -hmm. Going back. Okay. Yeah, they're leaving trap. trap. Yeah. It's, so, like, it's good that you called this one out, but um, call Great this branch. one out as well. Okay. That rock. So, um, it's I I didn't hear this one the first time. Right? So I'm, I'm glad you know, I, I, and it's good that you're uh, you're doing it sometimes at least. I don't so it's, you're, uh, uh, you're part of the way there. Um, let's get back forward. You wanna... I'm dead. I'm so gonna kind of be on um, counters for people. Whenever you can, we don't. Forgive this lot. I had severe trouble doing this. Oh, where am I? Oh, do you not want to look at this point? I mean, we can't say that severe trouble. Like, actually, yeah, halt would be good. <laughs> yeah. Actually, this is a weird point to spectate. It is. I couldn't find any. I, I was like trying to remember how does Al Horowitz do it. I just couldn't remember. <laughs> they do first person mostly. Um, for this. So, you know, you're right. Yeah. Does that or am I... But first person isn't good for anything but first person bugs. Right. So. All right. So we're still blue team. We're but yeah. Still... Oh, okay. Wait, we're Mercy? No. So I had. I had told him who his heroes were, like his choices between Lucio and Ten, and for some reason, he thought Mercy was an option, and he goes Mercy, and he 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 switches right quick to Zen, because I think they wanted to switch to Zen. Instead of talking about switching to Zen, out of here. I don't I don't know I don't know what went through his head. Okay. <laughs> At this point, when it's been 17 seconds since the door is open, your only option is Lucio. Yeah, I mean, that was the that they was have the a con where they talked about, so I don't know what Kitty. I, I forgot why yeah. Kitty decided that. So, yeah. Like, Zen might be, like, the better option for the composition. It, like, it's debatable, but, like, it's been 20 seconds. Like, yeah. I think the only option is Lucio here. No. But, like, Kitty's not here, so, I mean, whatever. You throwing shield up. Good shield call. Halting up. Same halt as the first uh, team fight on the other two points. Higher SR teams. You guys are, you guys a, are all um, A higher SR team. Like, they do it a little bit here. I think because they've got some higher SR people on their team, they're a little bit slow to it, though, because they have to communicate to everybody else. But a higher SR team will see that you've used your halt and immediately rush in because of it. Oop, where's the delete? Okay. I've been spotted. By yourself. You guys, are, you guys are walled in. Why not? 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 Where's there Hanzo? Almost. Yeah, okay, I gotta get out. There Hanzo. Hanzo no longer just for Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? He's up. He's up. He's up. He's up. He's up. He's up. At this point, somebody on the team needs to make the. Like, Volatile, I'd like you to announce that you're dead. I have my Because not everybody would have noticed. Like, they should notice, but, like, people miss things. It's chaotic. And then, also, somebody needs to be making the call that we're 5v6, and since we haven't... We didn't get a pick in, like, the three seconds after the 5v6, we should back up and give some space here in order to um, to regroup and take a 6v6. So, how you want me to use it? I personally don't care. Who do you? 
I got this in, I got this in. I don't know how Nox ended up dying. Shield him three. Oh, is it just four? Oh, is it just four? The shield, one the shield. Okay, I'll get out. Side, 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 side. So you said ten minutes is a tryout, right? Uh, we don't. The bat, yeah. Yeah. Is, are they coming back or no? Uh, as Fed said, I would give them two. Okay. I would say I'll give them two. Um. So it's with the VOD review in between. So. Yeah. Uh, the. I mean, I don't. I don't mean to like constantly bring you up volatile, but it's just it's just the meta. I promise, it's not you. It's just everything, everything. combos with pull. Like, <laughs> I'm stopping the video basically every eight seconds and every ten seconds because shield and pull are just so important in this composition. Uh, I promise it's not you. Um, with the Batiste play here, I've noticed this a couple times over the VOD that there's... I mean, it happened with the with Phantom Sanzo as well. Um, I haven't actually... Has Call it ulted this game? You know? I don't know. Probably has, I just don't remember it. Um, but these, these are things that just need to be called out before they're happening in order to combo with Volatile's pull. Because you can't expect Volatile to just be reacting to everything the six enemies are doing and then also reacting to everything that Volatile's five teammates are doing. That's just that's too much for any one person to actually process. Um, so like the the Luminous uses the immortality field here really early in the fight and then commits the the ant matrix, at which point the the enemy team just walks away. Right. So like it wasn't a great situation we're using the ant matrix and if we are going to use that situation it needs to be set ahead of time so that volatile can pull them back and we actually get some value out of um out of the matrix instead of them just walking away but it's just another example of the communicating which resources we're using so that we can time those up that's the biggest part of this meta is timing and at the end my best yep that's it we we got we got thing my back 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 they don't have anything to poop us if we want to go the other way. I'll probably be in two Yep. Oh, yikes. We just, stay, we just stay in here. No, don't peek, don't peek that Hanzo. As I peek. Yeah, Watch me. me. Uh, okay, I wish I could get myself Sonic. Yeah, I uh, just get our bath into cover. I'll, be, I'll get myself into cover. Really here? So all this time that Phantom... Oh, sorry, not Phantom. That Nox is in the... Is in our own back line. Like, is time that he should be setting up flanks. Like, he could be teleporting in here and waiting for his next teleport to sneakily go over here. He could be going, doing any number of things. Um, but this is really hurting our engagement timings because Nox is waiting until we're starting to rotate and then isn't able to complete his flank by the time that we're trying to engage. It seems like he's new to Reaper. What else do they have? They probably have a few. Yep, they oh, probably yeah. have their yeah. mail. Yeah. They... He had played it. May block. Yeah, careful of wall, careful of wall here. I'm, take, I'm going behind them. I like the I like the shield placements here. The the pull on the May, identifying that uh, she used her ice block, and then taking an aggressive shield placement with your next one because you force the resources. This is all really good stuff. Fortify wasn't needed there, though. Um, sorry, let me go. I'm, take, I'm going behind them. Oh, like right here? Yeah, I kind of use yeah. that and my shield together. Sometimes I just expect my shield to get evaporated. Mm -hmm. What else do they have? They probably have a few. Yep, they probably have their mail. They... So the other thing with that is... Um... And May block. I, this is your guys' first time playing this comp. Yeah, careful of wall, so careful of wall here. Get way more comfortable with this. Is um, overlapping that with the immortality field. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully in the future you'll have a Batiste player or Luminous will start doing it. Well, who calls out their immortality fields so that you know this and you don't have to just read their mind. Getting a little wide over here. This is a poor call by Kitty. Ryan has full 2000 HP shield. Um, 
there's only three of us alive and there are six of them alive. And calling a target in that fashion suggests that we should be aggressively going on them, like repeating it over and over, like calling it aggressively gets everybody thinking that we're going aggressive um, and just didn't have the resources to push aggressively. So a lot of what I was considering opening up the VOD review with a breakdown of the most common issues in this meta, which is timing, and that is what happened um, without going over that at the beginning, so we covered it anyway. Uh, but calling resources and calling timing is the, the most important thing. Uh, secondarily is uh, um, calling pathing, but you guys are already doing some of that. Um, and it's lower on the tier list, but I think the biggest thing for the next scrim is just calling each resource that you're using. Um, like if it gets to be too much, then we can scale it back. But the I don't think it'll get to be too much. It's it's requires a lot of thinking to do, and it's not super easy, but it's important. Um, and then for Phantom taking. Uh, like flanks are fine, um, but like thinking of when when they're fine and when they're not fine, um, and when off angling might be angling off angling might be more appropriate. Um, okay, that's all. I mean, it's been an hour. Uh, I'm perfectly satisfied just looking at one vod and doing one hour because I I don't. I don't find value in uh, going on and on forever once you've got a couple bullet points, if you guys are satisfied. Do you mind, real quick, like just going over um, whatever was I said earlier? <laughs> um, oh, the uh, the triggers for yeah. engagements? Yeah. Um, so basically, anytime somebody uses an, an oh shit cooldown, um, like if you if you're imagine you're playing a character and you find yourself in a situation you say oh shit and you use a cooldown in response to that like if you if you're playing Zarya and you use your personal bubble that gets you out of an oh shit situation anytime you somebody uses an oh shit cooldown so like if um if May uses her ice block if Reaper uses Wraith if Tracer recalls if Zarya uses her personal bubble um, if the enemy Lucio amp speed and we still have our amp speed um, any any escape ability or any oh shit ability. That the enemy uses is great for us. The the only other category that I can think of is um, long committed cooldowns. With Arisa Shield being like the biggest uh, example of that, is once Arisa puts down her shield, you're really committed to that position. Um, so if you're playing a comp, especially a comp with the Lucio, um, where you can take advantage of them, the fact that they've committed to that position, then that can be another trigger. Because they can't really adjust. Um, against a Arista Ryan, can mm -hmm. you explain how we should be using Lucio or Bat? Like in both. Like I assume there's there's reasons for using both. Can you go over both? Um, I mean, in in general, if, if assuming that you're playing a Arista Sigma versus, want to keep distance. Um, so, like, Lucio's boop is a good way of peeling. Uh, less effective now with Reinhardt's steadfast passive, which is slightly annoying. Um, and then, like, the Arisa of Rhine fire strike through the Ant Matrix combo that will one-shot any squishy is just another thing that you have to look out for with your immortality field timings. Because um, you, you can't heal up 200 damage on a squishy. You just have to use the immortality field for that. Uh... I mean, against Arisa Ryan, I wouldn't recommend playing Lucio in the first place. But if you're already on Lucio, then... I mean, it, it, it really depends on the full six characters, is the thing. What your team's con uh, win conditions are in comparison to the enemy team. So I'm... Okay, yeah, so, yeah that was a thought, too. Uh... Like that was our thought was to go Zenyatta whenever they saw Arisa Ryan, but I wasn't sure if Lucio was mm -hmm. ever a reason to. Like, yeah, I don't know. I never. Yeah, 
I mean, it makes sense that I the mean, shield wouldn't be an like isn't really an option, but I figured there might be a reason we would use Lucio on occasion. But yeah, um, Zenyatta you can. was the choice pick against a Arisa Ryan comp. Yeah, you. I mean, it's you can make anything work, but I think you're just making it harder on yourself by playing Lucio. Right. Um, if you're if you're thinking of everything as being variations of the of the default meta, like if you get too far away, then it's not useful to think of it that way anymore. But um, the 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 more you, I I like to think of it as the more you can limit it to just the differences between your comps being just a couple of factors. Um, then if you're closer to the meta than they are, your composition is stronger than theirs, right? So like the, the meta comp is built on poke damage and distance. If they're playing a slight variation on the meta comp and you fall back to the meta comp, typically, and it's different in some metas, but typically you're going to, your comp is going to beat theirs by relying on, like, because it's built on the core synergies of all having the same condition. And the fact that they've swapped out a meta character and you haven't means that they are losing part of the in condition of shield break and playing distance. Okay. Can we talk about the... So, unfortunately, we're probably not going to run Arisa Ryan just yet. Um, yeah. I haven't seen enough of Pasty lately besides that scrim. Um, so mm -hmm. I'd rather I'd rather Colo stay in, and he's a, definitely a Sigma like over his Ryan. So, can we talk about Arisa Sig, May Hanzo versus Arisa Ryan, May Hanzo? I mean, the differences aren't huge, right? So, like, you're gaining a little bit of damage with your Sigma. They're gaining a little bit of shield with their uh, Reinhardt. Um, you can make up for the, the lack of shielding by uh, perfecting your timings of the Sigma's Grasp. Uh, that can make up, what is it, 700 difference in the shield? Um, the the combo of the Arisa Rhine being the Fire Strike pull through Ant Matrix. Um, is really what makes that combo like not always inferior to Arisa Sigma. Um, if you're not syncing up your timings, though, I think it is naturally stronger just because it's got more shield timings. But one, if you've got your timings down, I think the the Arisa Sigma is by far the stronger composition. Um, the the other thing is with Arisa Sigma versus Arisa Rhine, the fact that they don't have shield damage on their uh, Ryan slash Sigma player, and you do, means that the longer the fight goes on, um, the more advantage you gain, because Ryan's not swinging his hammer, right. and you are shooting your primary fire. So the you want to play for survival more than you want to play for plays, like big plays and big pop-off moments, and play for play for time. Okay. What should our maybe be looking to do? Because we're um, going to be at a distance for a long time, I imagine, with this. So is May right. really needed? Because, you know, yeah. So I'll just leave it there. Is May really needed here? Um, I think May is incredibly useful in the current meta. Like she, I mean, a patch just went through like eight hours ago that nerfed May. So like maybe, maybe she's there. less okay. prevalent. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, that was only a week. <laughs> they it and it, sorry, it's not relevant. Um, the the distance on May's wall is quite far. It's I think it's what twenty five meters, thirty meters. Um, so even if you're playing at extreme distance, you can still get value out of Maze Wall. You can get value out of Maze Right Click. Um, the other thing is that Maze Wall blocks the LOS of enemy immortality field. So, like that—that that being one of the big cycles, right? Like you use your Risa Shield, you use your Sigma Shield, you use your Risa Fortify, you use your Sigma's Grasp, and then you use your immortality field. If it gets to that stage for both teams, and otherwise a mirror match. And you block off the LOS of their immortality field. All those people that were twenty percent HP go down to zero, um, with just a little bit of damage. Uh, so I think Maze Wall is incredibly useful. Uh, even, um, and that that's on top of all the typical ways of that Maze has been used in the past of just isolating enemies. Um, the the other part that I think makes May so strong in this meta, other than the fact that she's just been buffed and buffed and buffed the past year, is the fact that you want to be playing so close to corners in order to have your immortality field around the corner, um, so they can't be shot and you still get the value out of it. Um, because people are playing so close to corners and so close to chokes, that's just a playground for May. 
because she likes to wall off chokes. Mm -hmm. um, so she just naturally gets a lot of value. Um, yeah, I mean, she'll she certainly won't get more relevant with the nerfs. Um, I've had my team doing a bunch of stuff with Farah and a bunch of stuff with Junkrat um, in response uh, instead of May. Uh, I think high even higher SR teams will punish that with better May play. Uh, like if you can wall off the immortality field and you can isolate people and kill them even faster than my elo does. Um, there, there have been teams that are playing like Hanzo Fair instead of Hanzo May. So like she, she isn't always like even when played to the highest level, she isn't always a hundred percent pick even pre nerf. So I think there are situations to not pick her, but I think she does provide a lot of value that people don't necessarily see on the surface. Okay, cool. Uh, one more. What hap Well, how would you deal with a pharmacy with May Hanzo or Reaper Hanzo or something like that? Against Silver Shield? Well, Silver that's, Shield? that's exactly the thing, is that's the next step in the circle of counters in the current meta. Um, and a lot of people are running far on good far maps for that reason, is because she's particularly difficult to deal with in that composition. Um, the primary way is Discorder and have your Batiste shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, your Batiste just has to have good aim, or else you just kind of lose. Um, yeah, we struggled with that last night because mm -hmm. that was my thought. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. I know you're continuing. I was just going to say, fortunately, the pros have good aim. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we struggled with that last night because we did run into that, and that was my thought was to have our Discorder and shooter, but we could never. So, it was like the Rue 66 corner. Right, that first corner, mm -hmm. and that fair just kept, you know, yeah, like fair just kept holding the wall, and so mm -hmm. we couldn't ever round that corner safely enough because they were firing down from gas station, and then far was raining hell from above, so he just yep. couldn't ever get a foothold long enough for his end to get a discord and for me to even try and shoot her. Yeah, so I mean that, that that that's that's the reason that Farah is like the variation that's been seen, the gotcha. like the singular variation that's been seen to the current meta. Is because she's so difficult to deal with the current meta six. Like the the solution, uh, the obvious typical solution is to be uh, swap to hit scan and kill her, right? But swapping hit scan is going to lo lower your shield damage because you're swapping off of projectile characters. Right. So if you um, if you don't kill her insanely quickly, then you're going to lose the battle over time of the shield. It's it's like that's just the reason that far is being played is because there isn't a good answer as far as i know gotcha okay the good answer go being there. have your batiste hit like two three round bursts of headshots that's while she's discorded easy. that's easy yeah <laughs> that's your best case scenario gotcha like, your next best there. case scenario is hoping you have a good widow player who the fair and then click the mercy mm -hmm. um and then your third scenario is like swap off of the whole meta six and get oh, a different a new meta. <laughs> like seriously, like dive would probably be the, your next best win condition because you aren't going to win shield break and you aren't going to um, win if your hit scan can't click on her, right? So you have to completely swap your win condition from those two things if you can't do those two things. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool, I like that. But like, it's dive isn't in a great spot, so like. That's option number three. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, any questions from you guys? Uh, not that I can think of. All good here. Yeah. So the, sorry about the. Uh, it's it's strange doing a like a team vibe with two people because it's. Yeah. It's, it's like awful. leaning into personal vibe and then leaning into team vibe stuff. It's like. Yeah, the reason today happened was because we have a scheduled one with a an actual gold team tomorrow that was scheduled last week. Um, but I did mm -hmm. want I didn't want them to go into tomorrow with just no new information because you know yesterday was pretty harsh. So um, that's yeah. why tonight happened. But generally, we would have them Monday, Wednesday, Friday on our scheduled days where people would be expected to show. Yeah. But um, this was an off day, so I you know I always make those optional. And it's recorded, so they'll be able to see it later. But yeah, that's why today happened. Okay. But yeah. yeah so just the team would be here. Biggest thing is is calling out your abilities and calling out when you're doing your abilities, um, and giving 
for things that aren't reactionary, like your uh, your Fortify or your Sigma Grasp might be reactionary. For things that aren't reactionary or don't have to be, trying to give as much notice as possible um, so that your teammates start, know what to expect. And and then keeping your teammates accountable because they obviously they weren't here. But um, even if they were here, like it, it's really, really easy to fall back into um, kind of coasting and not calling out everything and not being proactive. Um, so you just got to keep each other accountable during maps that we got to call stuff out um, and positions such that we can help each other, like standing at corners so that we can have immortality and placing our uh, Batiste ult such that everybody can use it and all that, all that jazz. So Sounds good. Yeah. Anything? Any other ready break? On? Yep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, we we go again. That's uh, uh we're gonna rinse and repeat and keep tightening things up. I um, appreciate you two coming. Yeah. And Knox was here for half of it, so appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening to me ramble just... forever. Well, yeah, I no got to talk to a team. So thing, okay, see you yeah. all. Uh, so for tomorrow, my hero pool is gonna be Hanzo and May. Um. Probably be mostly Hanzo because Knox has informed me that he does at least know how to play May. Like he plays it regularly, but not obviously not in any kind of scrim setting. So he'll be just as new as you are as far as in a scrim setting to May. So May Hanzo may come out. Um, I'm kind of interested to see after I speak to him about tonight um, if he tightens up his Reaper comms. Like so, I wouldn't mind putting him on Reaper just to get him t just to get him learning how to calm and time it with the team because that's just going to be essential for the day that dive does come back or we run something else mm -hmm. um, or the Ryan's already reaper that we like to run you know just when we do the same thing where we engage him in the back line or off angling and then you guys uh, clashing from the front so just the fact just to get him timing like i mean, it may just stick him back on reaper for a map or two but he would be the may so you will probably be exclusively hanzo tomorrow unless just something freaky happens you know maybe we decide to run some other comp but if you're running double shield, you'll probably be Hanzo. Okay. Unless you want good. to run, May, then we can uh, we can make a, we can make map five. We can do something crazy. I mean, that's completely up to you. Okay. Uh, I mean, Hanzo, obviously, you already know I like playing Hanzo, so May just throws that in there. Like I said, Pharaoh's my worst hero of them all. So <laughs> if we plan on running Pharaoh, don't expect nah. me to do anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. I'm not gonna run. I'm not gonna run you guys on something that you just like. Or just not ready to run yet, like as far as hero was. So that's why we ran what we did yesterday. But uh, since you guys are at least confident on those heroes, and you know we can actually give them a shot. So, but yeah, you'll okay. probably be Hanzo tomorrow. The way All it right. sounds after tonight. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So the the two things that I forgot to mention, I wanted to mention the one of the big reasons that Junkrat is I feel like pretty decent in the current meta. Um, assuming that the other team is playing the meta six, is that his both his grenades and his concussive mines damage multiple May pillars at the same time. Uh, so he's oh, extremely yeah, efficient at taking down the walls. Um, well, it'll only hit one pillar, but so like the current the one grenade will do one thirty damage to whichever pillar it hits, but the one next to it it'll do like eighty damage to. Gotcha. Yeah. So it That's takes four cool. grenades to take out a pillar, but then the fifth grenade will take out the pillar next to it. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and that's, that's without cool. anybody helping. So if you're yeah. playing in a situation where the uh, where the other team's playing May because of the walls that they're putting up, um, and they're not getting like value out of her cleave freeze or whatever, then you can completely nullify the value of the walls just by like playing Junkrat and shooting the walls. And then after the walls are down, you're back to play. You're on Junkrat and they're on May, and you're just doing more shield damage. Yeah, yeah. I have. The, uh, yeah, go ahead. The, the thing to look at with Pharah is that you're dedicating your Pharah and your Mercy to being in the sky, which means your core is only four instead of six. So it's if the other team identifies it um, and they don't die in the process, it's really easy for them to rush your core. Um, so picking your second DPS that you're playing with Pharah accordingly in order to deter them rushing your core and also positioning yourself accordingly, knowing that that might be their, their plan of action. Gotcha. Yeah, I had, so I had made the junk the junk call optional, and mm -hmm. uh, when we had talked about yesterday, like if they're running, 
uh, Sig Ryan. I'm oh, sorry, gosh, Arisa Ryan, and um, they are w, like if they're just winning the W war, which I, that's what they're trying to do with Reinhardt, um, mm -hmm. to go to Junkrat for one to deter that with cause instead of May. Um, yeah, instead of instead of, okay. of Hanzo at that point, because we, okay. we had Hanzo I then. wouldn't I recommend think. subbing out Hanzo. Like, I did the math of every instance of damage that Hanzo does and every instance of damage that Junkrat does. It takes until you've been shooting for 11 seconds for both Hanzo and Junkrat for Junkrat to surpass Hanzo, and he only does it for 0.1 second, and then Hanzo takes it back for the next 11 seconds. Oh, really? Okay. So Hanzo just does more shield break than Junkrat. Gotcha. Okay. Every, for 99% yeah. for of the time, and then 1% of the time he takes it, and then Hanzo takes it right back. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'd suggest running Hanzo with Junkrat or just not playing Junkrat. Yeah, there was a, I can't remember, there was an instance where I said Nox should do it, or I think I said it, if if the enemy isn't running a sniper, then, uh, yeah, I had said our Hanzo should switch, but then if they're running a sniper, we want to keep the Hanzo and switch Nox just to deter them for, because Trap will hurt W and then Kongs can push them and do damage and then Junkrat does a lot of splash damage. Yeah. But I didn't know that Junkrat did more, uh, did less than Hanzo. Like, just flat yeah. out. That's crazy. <laughs> Hanzo's kind of fucking OP. That's crazy. Yeah.